Aloha Kako, I am Daniel J. Moore, and welcome to another beautiful movement session I like to call M3, which involves movement, massage, and meditation. This is a 60-minute session. Let's get it. Sorry, I got my camera in one place and I got my monitor somewhere else. So sorry if I keep doing one of these numbers right there. We're going to get started in just a few seconds here. Give everybody a chance to sign in. If you guys want, while you guys are sitting there, uh, maybe massage the wrists a little bit. Get your wrists moving. Um, we're going to be doing some movements today that incorporate some pressure into those wrists to help to keep our forearm uh, muscles and the shoulder muscles functional. So you might want to massage those wrists a little bit while you're waiting for us to get started here. You take Maybe take that massage into the shoulder. And take it up into the neck a little bit. Good morning, Arlene. Good morning, Catherine. So we're about to get started. So while you guys are, while everybody's uh, tuning in, maybe if you want to start with just some gentle scrubbing of the body. So this is something that you guys can do, you know, throughout your day. The hands are such a tremendous tool for encouraging circulation in the body. So spend some time throughout your day, you know, even if it's just a couple minutes, just taking your hands and just, just stroking over the surface of your skin. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, too crazy. It's just the idea of massaging into the body. Good morning, Janice. Especially into the neck. Remember, the two areas of the body to massage, if you want to relax, neck and then your lower, your lower abdomen. These two areas tend to hold a lot of tension. So if you want to relax, make sure that you're stroking and massaging into these parts, okay? All right, I think we'll get started here. We got most of our normal crew. So without further ado, um, let's go ahead and lay on the ground to get started, okay? So I got a great session planned for us today. And of course, we like to start on the ground sometimes because we want to let go of tension that we're holding in the body unconsciously or subconsciously. So lay on the ground, please. If you want to bend one knee and just kind of rock your body a little bit from side to side and breathe. Start to feel the sensations. Focus your attention on the sensations of the ground underneath your body. If you've bent one knee, try bending the other. Just notice the sensations of the ground. Relax yourself. Okay, so from here, legs flat out, arms down by your sides. Inhale, exhale. Inhale through the nose silently. So I want you to take that air in in a, in a way that makes it silent so you can't hear it. And then as you exhale, exhale very slowly like you're blowing through a straw. Let go of tension. Allow your body to relax.
Roll your head from side to side. Feel the ground massaging the back of your skull. Be very gentle. Take your attention inside the body. From here, let's place our hands on our lower abdomen. And we're going to start with some gentle circular movements, just with the weight of your hand. From here, we're going to walk our fingers around the lower abdominal area. So this is kind of over the bladder and over the reproductive area. Of course, into the colon system, intestines. You could take that, the walking technique with your fingers all the way up underneath the ribs. So now we're including the stomach, the liver, spleen. So whatever technique you want to use, just start to massage the abdomen. And remember, while you're doing this, add that diaphragmatic breathing. So every time you breathe in, see if you can feel that belly lifting or raising towards the ceiling without lifting those low ribs off the ground. And when your stomach lifts up, that's a sign that your diaphragm is pushing all of your internal organs down. So your diaphragm is massaging your intestines from the inside, massaging your internal organs from the inside. Okay, if you want to bend one knee, press through that heel, add some Massage in through the back side. So now my hand is working on the front and also a hand working on the back. So now I'm adding the kidneys. Getting some nice circulation, some nice loving touch into the kidney area. Okay, let's switch sides. So bend the knee, straighten the other one. Inhale, exhale. Remember, the breath work is the center of our movement practice. So return your attention to the breathing as frequently as you can. You can add the spine. If you can reach all the way to the spine area, you can reach and massage into that as well. Okay, now... Laying on your back, take your right hand, stroke through the left side of your neck, through your sternum, into the stomach, switch sides. Full palm, gliding through the neck, and through the sternum, into the stomach. Your neck is rotating from side to side. Nice and easy. Nice and relaxed, surrendering unnecessary tension. Let your body relax. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and rock ourselves up to a seated position. And from this position, what we're going to do is, is we're going to do some break falls. What that means is, is I'm just going to rock back. And I'm going to smack my hands gently on the ground. So I can start in a tall position, pressing through the crown of my head. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to round. And then come right back up to seated, nice and tall. Okay? So round the back, smack, come right back up every time. Okay? So nice and tall through the spine. Smack. If you want to go more to one side, other side, or straight back, 
The choice is yours. Make it work for you. So as you go, make sure that you're breathing. Sometimes when we get into different positions, we start to hold our breath. So you want to notice those positions and bring some breath into your movement. Keep your spine nice and buoyant and relaxed. Keep in mind our body's 70% fluid. Give or take a few percentage points, I'm sure, but the idea is we want to keep our movement nice and fluid. You want to add a little bit of spinal wave at the top. Slap it down, come right back up. If you want to take your hands into the ground and start to mobilize the shoulders and the elbows, getting ready for more movement, feel free. Add whatever you like to this movement pattern to make it work for you. If the slap part doesn't seem reasonable or it's starting to bother your hands, take it out. The idea is just to make sure that when you're rolling back, you're not smacking your head on the ground. So as I roll, my chin is tucking towards my chest. Okay. From here, we're going to lay on our back and get into some rolling, um, rolling techniques. So go ahead and lay on your back, please. What we're going to do is bend both knees. You're going to take your arms above your head, and we're simply going to drop our knees to the side and roll onto your side, switch sides. So I'm rolling back onto my back. I drop my knees to the other side, and I roll. Okay, so nice and simple. Now, if you want to add to this maneuver, what you're going to do is take your arms from this Y position, if you will, and make it out to the side. So now when I roll onto my side, you'll notice my shoulders in a different position now. So it's the same move. I'm just adding different positions of my shoulder, and you're going to notice the ground massaging the posterior and lateral shoulder. You can even take your arms down by your side, same exact thing. Notice the difference. This is beautiful for massaging our internal organs because gravity is pulling our internal organs into different positions as we roll. So it's not just rolling around on the ground. We're doing so much more than that. So you can turn your attention into that fact. You can use your other hand as a way to kind of catch yourself. And again, just change your position in a way that works for you. Nice and gentle, rolling. Okay, guys. Let's come back up to a seated position, please, into our side bend sit. One knee bent in front, one knee bent in back. So let's get the WD-40 in the hips a little bit here and just start to move around in this position and just notice the sensations. Remember, take your time. Remember, work at a speed and a pace that's comfortable for your body. You don't want it to be too easy, but at the same time, it shouldn't be causing pain. If it is, you need to dial it down. Okay, so from here, post your arms behind you, switch those knees to the other side. This is the hip swivel. Now that you're in the facing the other direction, same exact thing. Mind for those sensations. If you got a little hitch in the hip, Play around with that. Change your position a little bit. This is taking our hips, and you can keep swiveling from side to side as I talk. This is taking our hips through internal and external rotation. It's taking the head of the femur, the top of our upper leg bone, and it's massaging it deep inside the hip socket or the acetabulum. So what we're doing is we're just 
you know, getting that synovial fluid, which is our body's WD-40, and we're working it into the, into the joint, into that ball and socket joint. So take your attention deep inside your hip. If this is way too easy for you, take your arms out of it. Now you got yourself a nice abdominal exercise. When you come to the other side, make sure that you're keeping your spine nice and relaxed. And that you're really being mindful of the stability and the support of the legs under your body. If you got to keep those arms behind you and do it this way, fantastic. Work with your body's ability. Okay. Keep it going. Nice and easy. Nice and strong. If you want to add to this movement, you can try lifting the back leg ankle off the ground. Breathe deeply and expansively. Always remember the breath. You want to keep yourself in a more productive arm position. You can keep your elbows in. You can also add reaches. 10 seconds. Nice and strong through this whole movement. Okay. All right. Let's go back to our break falls. This time we're going to do it from a squat position. So you're going to come up into a deep squat. And from this deep squat, we're going to roll back. And we're going to come right back up into our deep squat. Now, if you need to use your hands to get you up into this position, that's awesome. Great. If this is if this position is unavailable for you, then just go right back into your seated break falls. And again, if you just want to make it rocking, that's fine too. The squat is a really important position for us to be able to get into, but if we haven't been practicing, it might be unavailable for us at this time. So let's just work progressively. And you'll notice that when you get into this deep squat, your ankle goes into a flexed or dorsiflex position. And again, this is a really important position uh, for overall function and movement. It usually equates to stability and strength in the ankles. But again, if you need to use your arms, that's awesome too. Slow down your movement. Feel the massage happening between your back and the ground, your posterior hip and the ground. Again, if, you, if your movement's just rocking forward and back, awesome. This is so good for the abdominal muscles. So good for the stretch happening on the posterior side of the body. So you can feel that as you straighten those legs out. So much is happening here. Okay, so going back to our rolling. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to add a reach with the foot and the arm. So we're starting on our back. We're going to reach with the foot and the arm. Okay, so I reach with the foot and the arm, and then roll back to my backside. Again, I can change my arm position so that now my arm's out to the side. I can take my hand and my foot and reach in as many different directions as you like. Reach, 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 reach. And kind of press myself up off the ground a little bit. The idea is to get that nice reach happening. Reach. Reach. Remember to breathe deeply and expansively as you go. Nice and strong. 25 more seconds. 
So either slow it down or speed it up. Make it work for you. Five seconds. Okay, right back to our side bend sit, please. So this time we're gonna do hip swivels again. The only difference is, is we're gonna hinge at the hips and press up and then lower ourselves down. So when we do this movement, switch sides please, our spine is long, we're hinging at the hips. I want you to really emphasize the power of the posterior hip to get you into that upright position and then lower yourself down, switch sides. Okay, so long through the spine, hinge, press. If you have any knee issues, feel free to use your supporting hand to get you to that upright position and then lower yourself down. If this is easy for you, then go ahead and add any variation you like to make it or to add a layer of difficulty. When you press yourself up, I want you to assume a proud, powerful position. Notice what happens to your energy when you assume a power position. Even when you're lowering down, the tendency is to kind of fall into it. Keep yourself strong through that whole position. You might even notice that your eyes are making different positions or different, uh, having a different look as you assume what you consider a power pose. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay guys, we're gonna go back into our break falls one more time. We're gonna do it this time from a standing position. So let's go ahead and stand up. So from our standing position, we're just gonna lower ourselves down like with a squat and then come right back up to standing, switch sides. So I'm lowering down and coming up. So just like with the other break falls, I can either go straight back, I can go to the side, and I can also go to the other side. When I'm going back, you'll notice that I have like a, a waiter's tray position for my hand. So that I'm catching my head. I'm catching the momentum of my body with my arms. So try different positions as you go. And just use this as an opportunity to get your body nice and relaxed and loose. Shake everything out, keep yourself nice and soft. This is a fantastic warm up. For me, I like to use this break fall strategy as a way to warm myself up when I do my own personal movement sessions. Get yourself up however you like. Perhaps add a little bit of bouncing. Shake it out. Okay, let's get back down onto the ground, please. One last set of rolling. Okay, so this time, all we're gonna do is, we're gonna add a press up to a seated position. So from our backside, we're dropping our knees to the side, we're rolling onto the side, and pressing ourselves up to seated, side bend sit. Okay, so it's real simple, roll onto the side, press yourself up to seated. Remember to breathe. Remember to be smooth in your movement. Use these movements as a way to massage your body as you go. Lower down slow. Come up. Switch sides.
Remember, you have these different hand positions, so I can have my hands up towards the ceiling. I can have it to the side, or I can have it down towards my, my leg. And each arm position will provide another variation of the movement. Another opportunity to express movement in my body. We're going to be doing some movements that include the, the wrist pretty soon. So I want you to start to add some wrist circles as we're doing these movements. Reaching. And blowing. Okay, guys. Last set of side bend sit. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to put all the same things we just did from the hip swivel to the hip press. Now we're just going to add standing up. So what you're doing is side bend sit, press, and then from this position I'm taking this back leg, bringing it to the front, standing up. To come back down, I'm in a lunge, lower the back knee, put my hand to the ground, and now I'm in side bend sit. So remember, it's not about right or wrong. The idea is to use movement variation and to explore movement and express movement in as many different ways as you possibly can. Feel the sensations of stretch and strength within your hips. Use your hands as much as you like to get yourself into these positions. Play around. Have fun. As soon as you start being a jerk to yourself and saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. That's a cue not to slap yourself, but to say, hey, take it easy. Have a good time. Relax. Use this movement as a way to explore your world, to have fun. Okay, guys. Let's move into a foot uh, knee hand position, please. We're going to do some simple mobilizations of the spine. So we're going to start with a little bit of uh, cat-cow. So you're just going to drop your sternum towards the ground and lift it towards the ceiling, alternating through these positions. You can add a little bit of a, a wagging of your tail, so to speak. I want you to practice pressing into the ground with your hands so that your scapula comes around your rib cage. And then as you drop your sternum towards the ground, open up that chest, elongate the spine, pressing through the crown of the head and distribute that movement of flexion and extension evenly through the spine. So it's not about straining, it's about putting all of yourself into the movement and feeling and exploring that movement. You know, a lot of times we sit throughout the day, we're in one position for a long time. It's like eating an iceberg lettuce all day and expecting to get all our nutrition. So we're adding movement, adding nutrition to our bodies through movement. So you can add a little bit of lateral flexion. My spine is moving like a jump rope in this particular movement. And wag that tail from side to side. Flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. Feel the movement of the shoulders on the rib cage. Nice and strong. Okay, from here, you're going to take one foot forward. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to mobilize our ankles. So you're just going to take your foot and you're going to take it to the inside of the foot and the outside of the foot. And while you do that, I want you to press into the ground and add a little bit of load. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and add the wrist. So while my ankle's rolling, I'm also going to roll my wrist. So I'm actually putting pressure into my hand while I roll that wrist. Okay? Now I'm going to take my hand into the ground and I'm going to imagine I'm screwing off the top of a lid. And I'm going to do that in different directions. So I'm going to go this way and this way, but without moving my hand or my foot on the surface. And just notice the sensations in your hand and foot. Let's switch sides. So again, we're starting with just some gentle rolling of the ankle and the foot. You can add some variation to make it a little bit more playful. There's no wrong way to do it, but this is a mobilization for our ankles and for our wrists. Let me back up so you can see what I'm doing here. Put some pressure into the back sides of that wrist. Okay, now we're screwing in the top of that lid. So just pressing in and twisting, but without actually sliding on the ground. So this is the movement but without actually moving, okay? Just notice how that feels. Okay, so now we're gonna do some step out. So from our knee hand position, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring one foot forward. From this position, we're gonna come right back to our starting position, switch sides. So when you're doing this movement, I want you to explore the sensations of stretch and mobilization of the hips, but also the shoulders as well. And step out into different directions. So I can step out to the side. I can even step behind and change my hand position completely. So I can step behind. I can step forward. There's so many different angles that I can reach or step out into. So I'm literally mobilizing the hips and the shoulders and the wrists and the ankles all at the same time. So press into the ground. You can even bring that back knee off the ground if you like to add an additional load. Okay, guys. Nice and easy. Okay, so from here, go ahead and sit back onto your feet into a nice kneeling position. Let's just place one hand on our chest, one hand on our abdomen. Create some length through the spine. If this is uncomfortable, you can do it from a tall kneeling position. Let's just relax, our, relax ourselves down with a couple deep diaphragmatic breaths. Two more, please. One more, nice and relaxed. Okay guys, from here, back into our knee hand crawl position, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly drop your hips towards the ground into a cobra pose. You're pressing through the crown of the head. You're also pressing through the shoulders, opening up the chest. You can rock your hips a little bit from side to side, surrendering unnecessary tension. Keep your spine as relaxed as you can. But then from here, draw your belly button towards your spine. We're going to drop the weight back over the heels into a child's pose. We're gonna lead with the mid back. We're gonna send a wave of movement to get us back forward into our cobra pose. So we're gonna alternate between cobra and child's pose. So I want you to use a speed that works for you, but every time you transition, 
I want you to engage your core musculature, drawing your belly button towards your spine. And you can even, from this cobra, you can even imagine kind of squeezing your hip flexor muscles to get you back into this position. Breathe and relax. If this is uncomfortable on the wrist, you can move into a loose fist position. And as you're, as you're transitioning through, modify your position as need be. Feel the strength of the body, feel the fluidity of the body, change your position, move your body in different ways to add those micro movements to keep that fluidity aspect going, okay? If this is completely uncomfortable on the knees, you can always add a pillow underneath the knees. You can always slow this movement down a lot. 30 more seconds. If you want this to be more intense, you could take those knees off the ground, curl those toes under, drop the weight back over the heels, come into your child's pose, but modify it so that your knees are off the ground. So many different ways that we could do the same exact thing. Okay, guys, so from here, let's go back into our step out for our mobilizations. This time what we're gonna do is you have one knee, or one leg, excuse me, out, so we're in a, in a, in a lunge position, one hand's on the ground, and what we're gonna do is, well, technically both hands could be on the ground, you're going to mobilize or put your attention into your ankle and your hand. And all you're going to do is you're just going to shift your body into different positions to challenge the strength of the ankle and the foot, or the ankle and the hand, or ankle and the wrist, if you will. Okay, if you want, you could take the back knee off of the ground and add a little bit more load. And then we're going to switch sides. So from your knee hand position, put the other foot in front. And really, to simplify it, just think about moving your body weight in different positions over your stationary foot and hand. And then when you add that motion as if you were going to be screwing in or screwing on the top lid of a, of a bottle, but without moving your hand or your foot, you're going to notice that you're going to be activating muscles in your hands and your feet. And that's really important when it comes to stability and overall function of your wrists, ankles, fingers, and toes. Okay, so from here, we're going to go into our step outs one more time. So from our knee hand position, you're going to step out. This time, we're going to add a reach. So I come back, I step out, I reach, come back, step out, reach. If you want to reach with both hands, so I can step out, reach. I can add my reach to the ceiling, place my hands back down. I'm long through the spine, I step out, reach, reach, bring it back, and come behind, reach, reach, add as many reaches as you like, reach, reach, reach. Just imagine that you were on the ground and you needed to reach for something. Reach over there, reach over there, reach to the front over here. 
When you step out, make sure that you do it with control so that you're not just flopping your foot out to the side, but do it with control and add that gentle reach. Okay, guys, we're going to get into some working sets now. So the first working set we're going to do is a push-up with a little bit of a twist. So from our knee hand position, we're going to do it in a simplified way first, and then we'll add some complexity. So what you're going to do is you're going to lower your body towards the ground. You're going to take one leg, take it underneath, and reach under, and then press yourself back up. Let me show you how that looks from a regular push-up position. So from here, I can take myself down, reach across and under, and then press myself back up. So you can do it from your knees, reaching under, press up, or from your push-up position, lower down, reach under, bring it back, press it up, okay? So these are the working sets. These are the ones that are going to challenge you. They're going to challenge your strength. But use the variation that works for you. If being on your knees feels more reasonable for your body, then do that. Lower down, reach across, press yourself up. Just notice what that does to the body. Add whatever variation you need to make it work for your body. Fifteen more seconds. Okay, guys, that's enough on the wrists already. Let's go ahead and come to a standing position. We're going to do some uh, crossover lunges. So from our standing position, what we're going to do is we're going to step technically behind and we're going to lower ourselves down and then come right back up to standing, switch sides. So I'm stepping behind and coming right back up. When you come up, let your body relax. Step behind, come up. Now we're going to step in front. Step in front, come back up. Step across the other way. Step back up. Step behind again. So use a speed that works for you. If this is a little bit sketchy for any reason, just dial it down. If you can only go down a little bit, that's fine. Maybe you just squat just a little bit or bend those knees just a little bit. That's okay. Go down as far as what's comfortable for you. If you can touch the ground with a full palm, awesome. If you want to just come this far and take your hands in the direction of the ground, awesome. Feel the support of the feet underneath the body. Feel how the toes interact with the ground. Inhale, exhale, nice and smooth, nice and slow. Nice and easy. Okay guys, from here we're going right back down onto the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hands to the ground into our knee hand position, so our tabletop position. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to lift our knees up off the ground and walk our hands back towards our feet. From here, I'm taking my hands behind me into an inverted crawl, walking my hands out in that direction, switch direction. So I'm going to come forward, and now I'm in my foot hand crawl. If you need your knees to touch the ground, fine, no problem at all. But if you want more work, more load, take those knees off the ground. 
Okay? So you're just walking your hands forward into your knee or your foot hand position and then walking your hands back through the deep squat and back into your inverted crawl. Switch directions. See if you can keep your belly button drawn towards your spine. Lean forward. So now I'm in my knee hand or my foot hand crawl. Walk the hands back through your deep squat. Now I'm in inverted crawl. Switch directions. Okay, guys. Let's go back to our push-ups. So again, you're, you're either on your knees or you're in a straight-up push-up position or plank position. You're going to lower down and kick underneath and then press yourself right back up. So again, lower down, kick under, press up. Lower down, kick under, press up. Use the variation that works for you. Drop the weight back over the heels, add some variety. It seems like that's the move for me. I like to drop my weight back over the heels into a child's pose and then lower myself down. Hit that kick out, right back down. Make sure that you guys are breathing while you go. 15 more seconds. Make sure that you're giving it your all, no matter what which variation that you're using. Okay, guys, let's come to a standing position, please. Crossover lunges. This time what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a reach towards the ceiling. So as I step behind, I can reach with either hand and then come to standing. Reach forward. Reach up, doesn't matter which one you choose. Make sure to step in front, add that reach. So you want to keep your body loose through the spine as you go. You know, for you dancers out there, you probably have a lot of different variations of how you can add those reaches in these different positions. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you guys could do it much better than I can. But the idea is to get that nice support of the lower body as we move ourselves into that reach. You want to add a little bit of a hop. You can. Make it playful. Make it fun. Make it work for you. Add some wrist circles to get your wrists ready for that next set on the ground. Okay, guys, lower yourself back down, please. So from our knee hand position, lift those knees off the ground, but make sure that the spine is stable. 
by drawing that belly button towards the spine. Walk your hands back through the deep squat into inverted crawl. So we're going to add a variation to this one if you like. So what we can do is we can walk our hands back and forth, or what we can do is transition by walking our hands forward into our deep squat and then walking our hands back with opposite arm, opposite foot, and transition that way. So the three movements that we're doing is um, knee hand or foot hand crawl, inverted crawl, and deep squat. I don't care how you get there, but just remember that those are the three movements that we want. We want foot hand crawl, inverted crawl, and squat. And any variation of those three movements is good with me. Add some bounce. Add a little bit of movement in the process. Make sure that you're adding some neck movements. Okay guys, hope you're feeling good. That's my hope. All right, we got one last set of our push-ups, your favorite. Okay, so if you need to take a break on those wrists, just shake those wrists out, extend the fingers wide, drop the shoulders down as you bring your hands out to the side, shake it out again, make a nice fist, open the fingers wide, Add some gentle wrist rolls. Okay, let's get right back into it. So let's spread those fingers wide and put pressure in all aspects of the hand, not just the wrists. So again, lower down, kick under, press up. Lower down, kick under, press up. No matter which variation you use, give it your all. Lower down, kick under, come up. Make it work for you. Almost done. Hang in there. Okay. Let's come back up to standing. One last set of crossover lunges. So this time we're gonna add a jump or a hop. So what we can do is hop to the side, step behind, or step to the front. So remember, the depth of your lunge is totally up to you. Feel the support of the legs underneath. You can add those reaches if you like. Add whatever variation you like. Feel the support of the ground. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. 
Keep yourself as relaxed through the movement as you can. See how many different variations of this movement you can do. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead, get ourselves into a nice supine position. Start to relax the body. We're gonna go ahead and do a couple nice bridges real quick here. So you're gonna press through the heels, lift your hips up off the ground, nice contraction in the posterior hip. Inhale, exhale, as you exhale, I want you to lower your spine to the ground nice and easy. Come right back up into that bridge. From here, we're gonna add a gentle reach. So you're starting to slow down your breathing as we get into these more gentle, easier movements. Inhale, exhale. Lower your hips back down onto the ground. Okay. From here, you're going to bend one knee, keep one leg straight. We're going to roll onto our stomachs. Okay. Rock your hips from side to side. You're going to take your arm. One arm is going to be out to the side. And then I'm going to have one arm bent. And I'm just gonna take the leg on that same side of the leg of the arm that's out, and I'm gonna reach it behind to get a gentle pack stretch. I'm reaching, you'll notice I'm reaching through both feet. So there's one that's reaching behind, but the other leg is reaching as well. Slowly, gently, easily switch sides. So one arm bent, one arm straight, reach behind. Draw that shoulder back on the side that you're trying to stretch that pack. You don't want to collapse through the shoulder. Switch sides. Inhale, exhale. Start to slow down that breathing. This is an active recovery. Reach, switch sides. Switch sides. Really press into the ground. Reaching with that foot, slowing that breathing down, inhaling deeply and expansively, exhaling extra slow. Okay, guys, let's roll onto our backsides, please. From here, you're going to take both knees up at a 90 degree angle, and you're just going to lower the knees from one side to the other. Windshield wipers. Inhale, exhale. So remember, this is an active recovery. See if you can pair your breathing with the movement, perhaps breathing in as the knees come towards the ceiling and exhaling as they lower to the side. Try to keep those shoulders on the ground. Nice and easy, guys, nice and easy. Awesome, let's go ahead and straighten out those legs. Arms down by your sides, backs of the hands on the ground, palms facing the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. Slow on the exhalation. Notice that powerful heart muscle beating in your chest. It's powerful. And notice how the blood goes from top to toe. And you can wiggle your toes a little bit as you think about that. Shoulder to fingertip. Wiggle your fingers just a little bit. And just imagine the pathways for blood in your body are open. They're beautiful. They're clean and they're clear. 
Imagine the valves leading to and from your heart are supple, powerful, strong, open, and clear. Send a little wave of movement through the spine, almost like you're squirming on the ground. By contracting each one of the glute muscles, surrendering unnecessary tension, encouraging the opening of the pathways of power and energy through your whole body. Take your hands on your lower abdomen and just imagine all the internal organs are beautiful, healthy, and strong. And that your body's working out a solution to whatever stress that your body's gone through, your body's working it out. Take your hands into your scalp, massage into your scalp, take your hands behind your neck, massage into the back of your neck, perhaps just let your head relax inside your hands. Opening up that chest, imagine you're laying on the beach, nice and comfortable, the sun is shining, your body's absorbing energy from the environment through all the pores in your skin, even with your clothes on, your body is so amazing. It can absorb energy and power from the surrounding environment. Inhale relaxation, exhale tension, nice and easy guys. Whatever you feel in your body this morning, I want you to turn your attention into the fact your body is working out a solution. Your body is healing. If your body feels pain or discomfort, that's something to celebrate because that's your body's way of letting you know, hey, we're repairing something right now. So tune into that fact and help us with your focus and attention. Okay. Inhale, exhale, nice and easy, guys. Give thanks for your body this morning, everybody. Give thanks for your body. It's been carrying you through this whole life journey. Give thanks for its amazing capacity to be healthy and strong despite what we do, despite what's been done, either to us or from us. Our body is wired for greatness and we're tuning into that fact right here and right now. Okay, everybody, draw your belly button towards your spine. Bend one knee, then bend the other. Let's rock ourselves up to a seated position. Okay. If you need to hang out here in this resting position a little bit longer, you feel free. I'm taking you a couple minutes over. It's 9.02. My apologies. I hope you guys had a good time today. As always, I certainly did. Oh, I missed your message this morning. Hi, Cindy. Um, good morning, Janice, again. So thank you guys again so much for being with me today. Tim, it was good to see you, uh, or be with you, I should say. And I hope you guys will join me next Thursday, same time, same channel, for some more movement. And let's see how far we can go with this thing. So thanks for being on this journey called Life with me, guys. I really appreciate all of you, as you know. And uh, I'll definitely be looking forward to sharing time with you next Thursday. All right on. Thanks, Tim. All right on. Yeah, oh, you got a challenge in there, huh, Cindy? Those push-ups I bet you really liked with that kick under. I bet you liked that one. Okay. Fantastic as always. Right on, Janice. Fantastic. It was fun. Thanks, Catherine. Push-ups were tough. <laughs> yeah. I know even me, I had to modify. I was saying, oh, yeah, modify if you need to. I was like, I need to. <laughs> Those were fun. I hope you guys are feeling great today. Again, lots of love. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'll see you guys next time.